Not too long ago, researchers destroyed oyster cages on six sites across the Solent. Ever since, they've been closely monitored, and on Monday, a regular check was carried out at Saxon Wharf. For his PhD, Luke Helmer is looking at the survival rate of the mollusks. We started the monitoring in May, June, um, and the survival was excellent. And we had 95% survival across all of the sites. Last month, the temperature went up slightly. We're looking at the oysters have started to spawn. They're using all their energy up. So the, the uh, mortality increased, so the survival went down, but still maintained about 80%, which is still really encouraging during the hot summer months that we get occasionally in Britain. So we're taking all the cages out at the minute giving them a clean if they need a clean, looking at how many are surviving in each of the cages. And then from each of the cages, we're taking three oysters, taking them back to the lab and looking at whether they're spawning. Um, we've also got an undergraduate, uh, Eric, who's just started his project, looking at the biodiversity associated with the different cages as well, which is going really well. And we found, especially at this site, we found the uh, European eel, Anguilla anguilla, which is actually on the red list uh, and is in critically endangered. So which is really encouraging that they're using the oyster houses um, as a home for themselves as well. So we're trying to save two species now as well, which is encouraging. The cages provide perfect protection from any birds or larger fish that might prey on the eels. At the time of filming, though, they might have found a better hiding place. But luckily, other species cohabiting with the oysters weren't as shy. That it's a perfect habitat for the crabs, uh, a whole host of different species. So the oysters are a habitat themselves for smaller benthic species, which then builds up the food chain. And the crabs have a, a home and a supply of food that's constant. Part of the monitoring also includes checking the water quality. We're taking samples on a monthly basis, looking at the nutrients uh, to see if that's going to have any impact on algal blooms. Um, because last year we noticed that uh, after a peak in the chlorophyll and blue-green algae in one of the locations, we had a huge mass mortality um, event where about 50-60% of the oysters died. So what we're de now looking at is the nitrites, nitrates and phosphates to see if that's differing within locations and whether that could be a cause of the mortality that we might be seeing. I think for me, the, one of the most exciting things is how inquisitive the people in the marinas and the general public are and how eager they are to get behind the project. And it's a very easy project to sell to someone because everyone can see the benefits of it. You've got all these uh, boat owners that want cleaner water. Each oyster filters 200 litres a day. As soon as you get a huge population in there, you get a cleaner marina. So they're on board for that reason. You're looking at saving the eels as well, or providing a habitat for eels and biodiversity associated with the oysters. It's, yeah, there's so many different positive impacts that this project is really encouraging. On Wednesday, these oysters will be examined to see at what stage of development they are. Nicole Ries, VATS TV.